fun to play dress up just even for a minute in a Victoria Beckham dress. Hi, internet friends. I think we are on Vlogmas episode three. And today I've been kicking around so many different ideas for what I can film. Honestly, I need to do a combination of work and play. So I have a bunch of clothes that I really need to get listed. A lot of them are Christmas style clothes and New Year's Eve style. So I just want to focus on getting those up and listed but I've been really wanting to have some fun with them. So they've just been sitting in a pile, but I'm really digging the idea of making some fun outfit combinations and just playing dress up. A uh, couple pieces are like super cool, unique vintage finds, and then others are just like really good designer brands. So I just wanted to, you know, talk about fashion, have some fun, play dress up, see what kind of outfit combinations I can throw together. And then uh, I have not been over to the Grand Floridian yet to see all of the holiday decorations. They normally put up a giant gingerbread house and I just wanna go over there and check that out, see all the decorations and just have some fun with like Christmas time spirit. First style that I wanna play around with are these Zara shorts. They are so sparkly and sequin. The moment I saw them, I was like, this is holiday fashion in Florida. You can't get much more Florida than this because you just wanna wear shorts all the time during this type of year. I was actually thinking, now that I have those boots in my collection, this with the boots might actually be a look. So I love this all on its own, but I actually think it needs something to pull it together and just take it to that next level. And I have this vest that I thrifted, it's from H&M, but the structure on it is so good and it just instantly ties this whole look together. You have the texture of the sequins just kind of poking through and it almost gives you like a skirt feel, but I think it's just enough. Like this covers the short aspect of it. I actually, now I really love this. It just adds so much depth. And like I said, it just gives it more of a skirt look. Next is this Elizabeth and James dress. What drew me into this was kind of almost the car wash finish. And I know that sounds funny to hear someone say car wash if you don't know about the vintage car wash dresses, but this gives me that feeling or that design of that dress. And I haven't seen something like that in years. So I really wanted to play around with this. This does seem, I don't know, there is a part of me that feels like this seems like it might be a little bit too mature for kind of the look or style that I'm going for, but I'm willing to play around with it. Let's, let's see what we can do. Oh wow, this is so unexpectedly stunning and elegant. Doesn't feel like it's a dated style at all. It's actually really form fitting. I did not expect that part either. I thought it was gonna fit more like almost a pinafore style and just sit straight, but no, this is actually really fitted. Again, I love the car wash finish, it's so fun. It's just such an extra detail. I love seeing different takes and forms on garments that are just a little bit unexpected or not common, I guess, would be a different way to look at it. But yeah, I love this. And with the boots, oh, I actually kind of want to see what it looks like without the top on. Maybe it doesn't need to be layered. It could just be a piece that stands on its own. I quite prefer it layered. I think the white shirt underneath gave it so much more depth. So personally, I would stick with that. Or it's very hard to hide your bra on something like this. So maybe with a lace bra peeking out, that might be a good look. But personally, I preferred it much more with the white t-shirt on underneath. One trend that I am absolutely loving right now is the little skirt, big sweater. I don't have any big sweaters right now. So I do have, however, this big, almost like Little Red Riding Hood poncho jacket. So I'm gonna try this combination. I so wish I had a big sweater for this because it would be perfect. <sighs> Nothing better than a vintage Ralph Lauren little tartan plaid mini skirt. You can't go wrong. Did anybody else go crazy when they saw Kate Middleton wearing all red poncho? So beautiful, so stunning. This poncho is so freaking cool. It's got little sailor buttons on it. Oh my gosh, I just love it. I love it. It's not the oversized sweater, but I think it's a pretty close second to it. And again, with the boots, 
This outfit just would not be the same without the boots. Wouldn't go, wouldn't work. The boots just finish it off so well. Best purchase I made this month. When I used to have my vintage shop, I would take photos of outfits like this. If it was a poncho or if it had any exaggeration, I would always showcase it like this. And it would, honestly, it would make it sell faster. And I think what it is, is when you see big exaggerated pieces and movement, you know that once you get it on, it's going to have so much character to it. Like the drape and the lay of it is gonna be so good. And don't get me wrong, I would add in the photos of it like realistically pictured, but there's just something about catching someone's eye with that exaggeration. It just shows you. I mean, I know people make fun of Zara campaigns for how they pose the models, but there truly are some pieces that just require that exaggerated look and feel to draw you in and allow you to see just how fun and creative this is. Like this is not your ordinary jacket. This has character to it. And I think sometimes showcasing that like almost weirdness to it just, clicks in your head how much fun you can have with that piece. This next piece is a score of a lifetime and I still cannot believe that it happened, but it's a Victoria Beckham, not the Target Victoria Beckham, the Victoria Beckham. It is beautiful, but the best part about finding something like this is it levels up my game for construction and quality. It is so fascinating to me because, you know, I'm not in the income bracket where I could just go out and buy a piece like this, but when I thrift it, it gives me the ability to kind of look it over and see what went into the process of making this. And let me just tell you, if you flip this bad boy inside out, there is so much that goes into the construction of this piece. My favorite part is it has a built-in bustier piece. So this is attached to the bust and it has its own separate zip. The zip has a VB on it which that alone to me is just quality. So it's actually a heavy weave viscose. Upon feeling it, I thought it was linen, but it's a heavy weave viscose and it feels luxurious. <laughs> So this was just a fun experiment for me to get my hands on something that is a designer piece and has a little bit more thought put into the construction. I find Zara pieces all day long and we all know they're not the best to make. There's not a lot of time put into them. And for the price of the garment, you could actually buy on eBay something similar in a Victoria Beckham line. So I always like to think about something like that when I do hit the income bracket where I can start to afford buying pieces like this for my personal wardrobe. I feel like I'm learning so much right now on the type of investments that I want to make in my pieces in the future. The absolute saddest part for me, but the happiest part for my bank account is this dress does not fit me. It's like one size too big. I think I can pull it off, but it just doesn't sit comfortably. But how fun to play dress up just even for a minute in a Victoria Beckham dress. The last holiday look is actually this good American top that I thought was just a nice like silky satiny button down, but I kind of created an accidental outfit. I hadn't taken off the Victoria Beckham dress and put this on over top of it. And I was like, oh, this is, this is a look right here. I actually really like the belt hanging down too. I think that gives it kind of a fun, unique take. You guys know how I feel about slouch. Give me anything slouchy and I am happy. I especially like the sleeves on this because they are long and exaggerated. Just kind of fold it up like that. I dig it. I really dig it. The look that I originally had in mind though was this Alice and Olivia combo. I love oversized shirts with a small kind of cami sized tank top. It just creates such a fun look. I saw it years ago on Pinterest and now I just, it's like my favorite element to add to an outfit. And the best part is you can kind of leave it unbuttoned if you want to give it like more of a casual look. But this, oh my gosh, I love it. I love it so much. 
Okay, that's that for my outfit combos. I've been having so much fun lately putting aside thrifted pieces and just building outfit formulas and just experimenting with different looks. Uh, sometimes, as you guys can see, it can be very dangerous for me because it makes me just want to keep the items. But I think that's an element of my job that I enjoy the most. I definitely lost it over the last couple years, uh, especially when I transitioned from living in Los Angeles and no longer selling vintage clothes. I just feel like sometimes I'm still fighting my footing when it comes to what I want to do, where where I'm going with all of this. And yeah, I, I just want to say thank you if you guys have stuck around and still watching uh, just all the experimenting that I'm doing with my channel. It's weird because for some people, I think it's really hard to digest changes. Like my immediate family, I know they kind of struggle with seeing me go through all of these different ideas and just different motions and emotions. And I, yeah, I just, I guess I just want to say thank you. If you are sticking around and enjoying watching this process, it's weird because there's not many people in my space doing exactly what I'm doing. I feel like I'm doing a hodgepodge of a bunch of different YouTube genres. And sometimes it feels hard to kind of place myself in the mix. Like there's people who just strictly thrift for themselves and that's just their thing. And then you have resellers that are thrifting and only showing what they're selling. And I just have never quite felt like I've fit in in any category. And I'm not trying to say that I'm like creating my own category and you know, blah, blah, blah. Like I said, like I'm, I'm taking notes from all sorts of different YouTubers, but I think sometimes it's been kind of hard to find my footing and figure out like exactly where I fit. I just appreciate any of the support that you guys have given me with all of this over the years. I like talking about clothes. That's ju that's the just of it. That is what I have come to the conclusion with. I enjoy talking about fashion. I enjoy talking about art and creativity and just using those muscles to kind of find yourself. Let that be a reminder. If you are someone in the fashion slash creativity realm and you have people in your life that maybe don't understand it or push back on you and try and challenge you to maybe go in a different direction because it makes them feel uncomfortable, just remember that like, one, life is short, do what you enjoy. And two, not everybody falls into that category. And it's not only important for the person who's challenging you to realize that, but it's also important for you to realize that. And I think sometimes I yo-yo back and forth between trying to remember and encourage myself to think that way and just realize and understand that like, just because they don't get it and I, and by getting it, I don't mean like, oh, they just don't understand, like they can't think on that level. I mean, it's just not something that brings them joy and that's okay. But I think it's important to still encourage yourself to find that joy in it, even if people surrounding you don't necessarily find that joy. On that note, let's go see some festive lights because I'm excited to go see these lit up gingerbread houses.